Are you sitting comfortably? <laughs> then we'll begin. So, uh, or maybe actually come out here. Then. Is that better? Yes. Perfect. Yeah, that's a sign I always like to t take notice of. Always time for song knitting. Birdies. I think there was once in my life when I dared to walk through a field with that sign on. And let me tell you, I was moving fast. Oh, quick! <laughs> I can't see where he is, but you can rest assured that he's somewhere around. All right. Can you see it? It's yeah. like rusty colour. Oh yes. Oh, he's lovely. Oh, that looks familiar. Guilty as a puppy sat next to a pile of poo. <laughs> I'm thinking it's a fish. Goldfish. It's not a goldfish. Okay, it's, it's not gold. It's like a... Episode 45. 45. Your age, Kay. Not yet. It will be in May. It will be in May. <laughs> uh, we are here. We thought we would start with the first part we're actually going to split this favourite place is to knit part two into two. Oh, that's confusing. So, this is favourite place to knit part two, part one. Yes. And then later <laughs> on in the show, I'll be back with part two, part two. You got that. Should we just call it part two and be done with it? Yes, I think that's probably why. Uh, yeah, and I've been naughty today, haven't I? Well, on the way here, I all of a sudden realised... Look at that bird over there, it's got a yellow head. Where? Don't know what that is. All right? Yeah. Still win today? Yeah. We yeah. Are. Oh, very good. <laughs> yeah, what are you up to? Uh, we're knitting. We're knitting? knitting? Oh, brilliant. <laughs> we're yeah. doing we do a knitting podcast on YouTube and we go out and about in the English countryside. Oh, that's fantastic. Oh, my wife would love that. <laughs> so I'm looking for someone else who's filming today who's uh, oh, doing right. some accessibility filming with knitting oh. podcast. Sorry, I'm not... And it's no, a bit no, random, isn't yeah. it? Yeah, it's, it's, it's brilliantly <laughs> random. Well done. I'll have to look out for it. What's it? It's what's called it? Bakery Bears on YouTube. Bakery Bears? Yeah. yeah. Fantastic. <laughs> nice one. I didn't realise when we got in the car how we get to this part of the country we've been here before it's not we, far from where we live you didn't actually know where we were coming i never really have a clue no i just go along with Dan i did offer to tell you but you said don't worry i'll just go along with it i do you did and you did say that yesterday i did say that yes but you would you deliberately didn't tell me which road we had to come up to get to this point sorry and i think i've mentioned this road before on a previous podcast but we have to go up a road called sutton bank now anybody in this area, if you know this area, you will know what this road is. And it's basically a, it's about a one and a half mile climb upwards with a 25% gradient. Oh dear. Up the side of a, would you call it a hill? It's not really a mountain. It's it? a hill. I'm watching all these beautiful birds. Um, and it's quite terrifying. <laughs> so you have to come up this, this as I was saying, this hill called Sutton Bank, and I absolutely loathe and detest coming up this hill. Going back down is actually probably even worse. And anyway, of course, Dan didn't tell me we had to come up this particular road because he knows how I feel about this road. And I saw the sign for it. You know, we turned in Thursk, we turned left, and it's a five mile Sutton Bank. And I just looked at Dan and he looked at me. And I won't tell you what I said, but needless to say, I was not happy. No. So, however, I had to close my eyes coming up. She was not happy, were you? No. No. Uh, um, but I think we should... Should we start our journey into the story of James Herriot? Part two, should. part one. So I've nearly finished this row and I think Perfect. I've messed up those decreases. Oh, no. How have you done that? Because this side I wasn't decreasing and that side I was. So right. I've obviously messed something up. I'll have to rectify that. No! No. We'll sort it later. Yes, yes. we'll sort it. Okay, should we go and have a look at the finest view in England? Yay. Yes.
open woodland, I would say, if there's such a thing, um, to see the white horse. Now, the white horse was built in 1857 and it was a class project by, I think it was Kilburn Primary School, I hope I'm getting that right, Dan. Um, the headmaster decided to do this class project where he took all the children out and they, they basically carved out this shape of the horse and it's massive. I mean, it must have been a monumental task to actually do this. So we're just having a little walk now through to, to have a look at it. So we'll show you that. And this area that we're in, it's the North York Moors and you can probably see if Dan pans around a little bit. It's very different to the Yorkshire Dales. Um, it's much more kind of um, scrub, not scrubland, that's the wrong word. A lot more foresty and a lot more kind of heather and, and plants like that rather than, you know, the rolling dales with the lushness and the greenness. It's, it's very different, but equally as beautiful. These are the Hambleton Hills, and to give you an idea on where we are, if we went to our left about 10 or 15 minutes in the car, we'd get to Revo Abbey, which we've already taken you to. We would also get to Byland Abbey, but this, ladies and gentlemen, is the finest view in England, something Siegfried Farnham was particularly proud of when James first arrived. This time, we will be exploring these Hambleton Hills, and down there, that is James Herriot's home. In the distance is Thirsk, uh, and the surrounding villages were his patch, the areas which he used to cover. In the books, he depicted it much further northwest, over in that direction. That's where we were last time. This time, it's all about the real locations and the real people who were part of James's life. So, ladies and gentlemen, why have we brought you here to the White Horse? It is the most northerly turf cut. Uh, monument in the country. 339 foot high and we will get some good pictures from down below because the white horse is right down there at the moment. We brought you here because this is very much the centre of James Herriot country. From here we're going to trace the story of the real man. From his practice over there in Thirsk to where he retired down there in Thirlby to the church where he got married we're going to try and to own oh, one, of course, Mrs. Pumphrey's house. Um, we'll also find out the real names of all the characters. So this is where the centre of James Herriot's life was. And on that cold, maybe cold day in 1940, when he started work with Donald Sinclair, Siegfried Farland, of course, from the books, um, this is the route that he could well have taken. And en route, he will have walked by a lot of the things, a lot of the landmarks that were going to become so integral to his life. Um, but we're going to head straight down here now and start making our way down to the surgery. So this is, of course, the Yorkshire market town of Thirsk, and we're now making our way down Kirkgate. And I always find myself wondering, you know, on that day when he walked, you know, did he think he'd be there for a few years, a few months? And, you know, all these places, the Golden Fleece there that was actually the Drover's Inn, which we'll be going in later. And here is the spot which the filmmakers thought would be a wonderful place for him to meet Helen for the first time, but that did not happen. This meeting did not happen. The first time Helen met was on the double date where everything went wrong with Tristan. Now James was a fast mover. He met Helen in March 1941, and on November the 5th in 1941, they got married. And where did they get married? They got married right here. So St Mary's in Thirsk was built in 1430 and it took quite a while to build. They finished in 1480 and it's absolutely stunning. It's a Gothic church and it's as beautiful as any that I've seen. And if we compare it to the church that we saw in Grinton on the last episode, this must be 
crumbs. It must be at least twice as big, if not three times as big. It is absolutely huge and just so beautiful. And Kay just noticed actually when we arrived that they've actually built this up on a little bit of a hill, which I think is really cool, making it stand out all the more. So, you know, you could be down in town and when the church bells ring and it's time to come to, to a service or to mass, of course, they wouldn't come to mass here because this is a, an Anglican church, Church of England. You can actually see the church because it's up on this hill. And not only would James get married here, but also his daughter would get married here and his granddaughter would get married here. But on November the 5th, they came here to get married and who was best man? None other than Siegfried Farnham. Right up there is where we were just a moment ago. We were walking around um, along on the top of that cliff. And we're now down, just a stone's throw, I think, from Southwoods Hall, which is the home or was the home of Don Sinclair. Now, Don Sinclair was renamed to Siegfried Farnan in the books, and he bought Southwoods Hall, which I'll show you a picture of now, in 1945. And he actually lived there for the next 50 years. And I just love that. I think that that is how the world should be. Now, it's a rather nice home, so I'm not surprised he lived there for the next 50 years. Had 11 bedrooms. Donald fell in love, coincidentally, and very luckily for him, with the daughter of a shipping magnate, a lady called Audrey Adamson, who supposedly was absolutely lovely, and the complete opposite of Donald, or Siegfried as we'll call him. Siegfried, if you've read the books, is portrayed as opinionated, bossy, uh, very bombastic, um, you know, a really big character. And when the books came out, he was furious. Uh, and he, he said to, to Alf White, to, to James, he said, Alfred, this is a serious test of our friendship. But he was just joking. And, you know, whilst he always absolutely upheld that he wasn't eccentric, if you actually read some of the books written by some, in subsequent years by some of the farmers and also by um, James Herriot's son, uh, Jim White, you'll actually find out that, that James Herriot supposedly had toned him down, so he'd made him an even smaller character. But Southwoods Hall was his home. We're in the village of Thirlby, um, and it was an absolutely beautiful place as we found to live. It's so quiet. From all the books that I've read now researching this, Siegfried was clearly a very special man and I think we know this just through what we're looking at right now on that day on November the 5th in 1940 who does James turn to to be his best man? Siegfried Farnan and Siegfried had a very special surprise for the new Mr and Mrs Herriot and he turned James from an employee to a partner of right here finally James has made it to Scaledale House. This is the actual surgery where he worked for the whole of his working life, right the way up until his death in 1995. And when we come back, we're going to explore inside, and we're also going to um, look for some of those uh, places which we all know and love from the TV series, but the actual site. So let's go and visit Mrs. Pumphrey's house and see what that's like. Uh, so we'll see you later on in the show for more. wasn't it? It was fun. So we stood outside Skeldale House in Thirst, oh. waiting to cross the threshold. Had we not gone in yet? No, we haven't. Mm. We have not gone in yet. It's super exciting. I do it's have really to good. say, yeah, it really, really, really is good. It was, I was really stunned. good. Really stunned. I loved it. I wanted to live, I seriously wanted to live there. I could have lived it. I could have lived in that house. You don't expect it to be as good as what it is. And no. this is, we're being very mean because this is all to come. They're going to have to wait oh, 40 minutes got before. To wait. <laughs> and unless no. you cheat and you fast forward through, don't do that. No. We've got lots of nice projects we to have. show you. Um, but no, on. it was, oh, it was just lovely. And we didn't expect, I didn't expect it. And I hadn't, they do have a website and everything, but I didn't look, um, not, not deliberately. But I kind of, I really just didn't expect it to be such a big house no. to start off with. It was really, really big. And um, I, but also just so, it had a fantastic atmosphere. You, I could really feel it was really, really lived in and, 
Oh, I just loved it. Just pulled the whole story together when you consider it. We started this, obviously, two episodes ago on our last favourite places to knit. You know, we were discovering, as we've said, all the locations that we use the TV series, but those were all places that James Harriet loved. You know, he mm. deliberately set the book in those areas and, and worked with the TV crews to pick those areas because he loved those areas and he desperately, you know, I think he would have loved to have worked up there, but of course he didn't. He worked down where we've just been and where we're going to go back to. And to go there and to see, you know, where he worked, where he lived, yeah. and it just, you really felt a connection. And yeah. then to find, like, I, I won't tell you what, but I, speaking to my mum found a familial connection as well between the whole thing which is just so cool so yes it later was, on yeah you'll you will love it well i hope you will you will love it because and the brilliant thing was we were the first people to go in weren't we it was so 10 cool. in the morning she and just we got in and shut the door yeah because you actually you pay you go like next door to pay where the reception is and then you go outside and they take you through the, the front door you know the actual front door so you feel like you're walking in, you know, you are walking in straight into the, to the house and there's coats on the coat rack, you know, and it, it just... It's amazing. Yeah, it's really, really great. And what about that start as well? Now, normally we would have cut that footage, but we chose to leave it in <laughs> because of what happened. And that was that really started off that day as it just went on. It was such a challenging day. That was fun, that yeah. bit, but the, the it was the hardest shoot we've ever had for interruptions. Yeah. Things just kept interrupting us. I think that was the thing. It, to be fair, when you consider the amount of these that we've done, yeah. for that to be the first one. The other thing, though, that I've noticed is we're obviously trying to push the boundaries a bit with what we're doing for you. And these large geographical area, multi-site shoots make it really tough to remember where you're at because mm. when you get to a place and you know i've done the research we've got the script we know what's what you know where you need to be and what you need to do when you add in that and th th that additional sort of okay well we've now got to travel somewhere else you've got to find it and then get out and then get set up and then you get lose going. track of how much footage you've got and you lose track of how much footage you've got yeah. and also as well um you, you don't get into the same sort of flow, flow. Um, but but that's not to say though. Yeah. It's been wonderful to share our home yeah. county. Yeah. And because you were born in Yorkshire, I was born in Yorkshire. Yeah. I mean, I was South Yorkshire, but you were North Yorkshire. But it's all Yorkshire, you know. Yeah. Um. Yeah. And it was, you know, that view from the top. It was just unbelievable. Well, you you will have seen. And we'll be back there later, so you'll Gosh, be able to see it again. It was just amazing, and it was a beautiful morning as well. It clouded over in the afternoon, but the morning was just beautiful. Cold, but you one know, of those views that you really sort of lovely. feel like you could just reach yeah, out. Yeah, and, and you could just touch. see so far. I mean, you you obviously will have seen it. You could just the camera doesn't do it justice. No, though. no. I to, don't to think physically anything. see it. it it's like wow yeah. and there was a, it's a real moment for me that i've actually written about in the bakery bear news which went out to the patrons yesterday and that is it made me realize when you get in the car to go to all these places that we love mm. you're actually already there mm. you're already in an amazing place yeah and yeah. you are, historically I don't think up until that day when I looked at that view did I realise yeah. I need to enjoy the journey as much as yeah. the, you know when we get to the destination. Except if the journey involves going up Sutton Bank, <laughs> we do not enjoy the journey. Now we didn't do any filming on Sutton Bank because I think if I asked Kay to use a camera, I think she may have combusted. No way, I was like this the whole way up, I was like this, <laughs> not looking. Did you see my face when that man said, what are you doing? I said, <laughs> there was a pause. Well, we're knitting. <laughs> it's just never happened to us that before. You know, in all this time that we've been out and about filming, that has never happened. And it just took us both by surprise. We were like, you know, I thought I was in trouble. That was my first instinct. I thought, oh gosh, this man works here and he's going to tell us off, you know. And then you said, why would he tell us off? We're just, you know, what are we doing wrong? Well, of course, that wasn't the case anyway. If we pulled up in a BBC van and got out yeah, with clapperboards, yeah. then I could understand it. Yeah. But, you know, crumbs, give me a break. To be fair, though, we were disturbed by another man we were. after that who said, you're not BBC News, are you? He did, yeah. I should have gone, and yeah. And he did he got work there. and stuck the camera in his face. He did work there. He was going around picking up litter, I think, wasn't he? He's was trying to avoid getting on camera. Yeah. It was very funny. But it was also very busy with traffic, bizarrely, wasn't it? Thirsk, of all the places we've been to, 
very First busy. has a serious traffic problem. Very busy little town. It never stops. No. And I think it's probably because, but you see, Richmond is the same because Richmond is a market town. Yeah, the square it doesn't the town. feel as busy like that. It though. doesn't. And what I was going to say was, with these market towns, as anyone who's who's been to one will know, there is a market space in the middle mm. where historically the market was and still is actually. Mm. But when the market's not there, people park on it. And so because of that, all the cars pile into the town centre and all park, so you've mm. got things. But that car park, you nearly got... Do you remember? You were... Um, it, it, you know, you got took your life in your, in your hands, really, trying to get from one bit of the car park to another because the, the flow of cars in and out, I've never seen anything like it. No. And, you know, one person would come out and another one would dash into the space. And yeah. I'm like, gosh, this is Thirsk in North Yorkshire. You know, Calm we're not down. in central London, yeah. for everybody. Um, but, lovely town though, it is. very and pretty. I was just going to say how amazing to think, and to be fair it could be any one of us, you know, any one of us could have walked by anyone today mm. who at some point in the future may go on and do what Alf White did, and th that was write the books and turn his story into something that we all know and love, and that then makes it so when you go to the place where he took that walk to get to Skeldale House on his first day at work, it does feel so poignant because mm. he's walking by the drovers as, as, as you've seen and the church where he was going to get married and so many places which were going to become so integral to his life. Beautiful church. Really stunning. Mm. It's just a, a shame that we couldn't get inside. We couldn't go in. It was locked actually, wasn't it? And it was early anymore. Well, it was 10, 9.30 I think yeah. when we got there. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it was a lovely visit. Absolutely. So, a Enough of that. It. After all, this is a knitting podcast. This is a knitting podcast. <laughs> what's on your needles? Well. I forgot to say. Kay Jones, what's on your needles? You just did say that. Didn't I didn't you? say Kay Jones. Mm. I missed out your name. It could have been anyone. Well, it could the lady have... over the road may have got her knitting out. Could have been. I wonder if anyone else knits on this estate. I wonder if they do. I wonder how many people knit in Darlington. Quite a few, I reckon. Do you think? I yes. think there's older ladies, though, so sad, I think. Yeah. But then the Sue, Sue's not up, no. you know, Sue's true. a younger lady. And the, there was the, the other lady as well, who ran the corner. Oh, yeah. Carol. Yeah. Carol ran the corner, <gasps> who's got the cutest dachshund in history called Monty. Uh, and every time she posts a picture on, she's Gingerbread Girl on Instagram, every time she posts a picture of Monty, I show it Bryony, Bryony combusts. And she's also just got this cute puppy, who is a spaniel, I think, is it? Is, is it a spaniel, your, your puppy, Carol? But very cute. Um, hey, Jones. Right. What's yes. on your All needles? Right. Yes, 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 yes. So, yeah, so I'm almost up to section three, and I've got one... Oh, no, I've got... Oh, there's some more increases to go for the ribbing. But so I've got one more set of increases to do within the body, and then there's just another huge increase to do before you start the ribbing. So I'm almost to section three, and I've just, this very second start of my fourth skein. What are you going to say? What do I do when I'm going back across oh. again? <laughs> just remind me, please. I'm sorry. You've done all that. How can you have forgotten? I just forgot. That slip knit. Slip knit, slip knit. Yeah. Okay. Slip knit, slip knit, slip knit. I don't know you can forget. I'm sorry, everybody. So, this is where I am up to. Like I say, I haven't done a huge amount. I think I've done a bit, though, haven't I, since I last showed it. It's exactly the same colour as what I'm wearing. <laughs> so clearly, I think this colour way nicer. Yes. So clearly... Ooh, not that we have a problem with that jumper. Thanks very much for that compliment. But I think, I think it is... Look, look, it looks like I'm wearing it. Do you think? <laughs> Shall we pretend I've finished it? No, no, I haven't. So I am really enjoying it still. It's getting a little heavy on the needles. I think this is my thing with garments, you know. That, and I do prefer top down things all in one piece rather than seam. So it's not like I could even say I'll knit a garment in pieces because I don't really enjoy knitting it in pieces either. But it does get cumbersome, doesn't you know, when you, you're pushing your stitches around and moving that round. And I find that whole business a bit um, frustrating. And I think that's really why I don't knit very many garments. Um, just because that you know I do I do get to the point where I just think oh you know I'd rather knit on something smaller but I am enjoying it and I will carry on so like I said I've just started my fourth skein 
of the Quinston Company Lark it is that I'm using. This is Frank's Plum. So I've got three more after this. So I'm hoping, hoping, fingers crossed, I've got enough. Um, yeah, so that's that really. And I've promoted it in the bag stakes to my beautiful bag from lovely Sasha. I was using this bag for my pinky purple blanket, but as you will see with that, that's been... She up, ripped that out. No, that's been not upgraded. It's been moved into something slightly larger. And I'll, you know, I'll show you why. So, so you have a bag grading system? I do. Well... So if... What... what do you have like... Look. I mean size, really. Oh, okay. I don't mean... Sorry, I thought you meant if you didn't like a project, you put it in a particular size. <laughs> in a way. particular Does bag. Does anyone else no, have that? I don't think so. I don't I'd be interested so. to know if people out there do that. In a naughty bag. Well, I have a bag, <laughs> a bag of, shame. of shame. I do have a bag of shame. Well, I don't use a specific bag. It's more of a saying, that, isn't it? But anyway, no. this is in my lovely bag from Sasha, which I love. And it's just the perfect size for this. So it's gone into that. And yeah, so I'm just going to carry on knitting, knitting, knitting. And it is a, it's a very therapeutic knit I think just because you are just going round and round some increases every now and again some eyelets every now and again is that you finished then that's that one I think I think that's everything I need to say about it and that's your only project um, isn't it no and this is for the um patrons gorgeous garments knit along which I'll just mention at endy bits but this is my contribution for that so yeah uh, I must just pause to say what lovely weather we're having at the moment it's pretty vile out there. It's raining, it's a bit windy, and it's freezing. It's very cold. It's been very cold. Well, very, we're see, we must well, say that because we'll we'll get we will now be off. bombarded now. With it, it, By UK standards, it's yes. been very cold. It's like it's like when you talk to anyone. When you take, if you take them to a hot country, they're climatized yeah, to, to that. Yeah. I think it's human beings. We are climatized to the norm. Yeah. So then, when something changes dramatically, that's when you feel it. Yeah. And it's cold. It is cold. It's yes. been around freezing, you know, and even only climbing up to sort of three or four degrees C during the day, yeah. which Dan Jones. Oh yes. What's on your needle? Well, it's sock number two and I'm doing a heel flap and that's what I forgot a minute ago. Oh dear. And, it, hold on, is the position of your yarn, does that tell you where you, what you're doing? Well, that's the back of it, darling, isn't it? So that should tell you what you're doing. Yes, but I'm just thinking, does the position of the yarn tell me what I'm doing? Not really. All oh, right, okay, I'll shut up. Okay, so uh, this is the second sock and it is Wintermond. Isn't it? No, no, it's not. They were the ones I knit. It's not Winter Wand. We had that discussion, didn't we? Sorry. It is what Daydream. Is it? It's okay, Daydream. Sorry. Sorry. Opal Daydream six ply, and it's eight three five three is the colour. And it's the new heel flap that I did for the first time in the last one, so I won't think I'm doing the wrong heel flap and make lots of mistakes. You this mean time. heel turn? <laughs> heel turn. Um, He's never going to, you know, oh, I've spent on. all this time trying to educate him and get nowhere. So the, the, the problem before was I, I just totally thought I was doing a different heel turn. So now that I know that I'm doing something new and that I've done once before, hopefully I shouldn't have quite Well, we so wrote many it down, didn't we? Because I can't remember if we remember. I think it's, a, it's square. Yes. It's a Dutch heel, this one, which I really like. Right. It produces a little square heel, if you can see. Isn't it nice? And it's it just it just fits your heel really really snugly. I really like that Dutch heel. Very nice. So yeah, I really it, it, the, the yarn is much easier to work with on the second you know second time through. I, I messed up the cast on, and I, I think that's because of the thickness of the yarn. So obviously, only the second time I've cast on using yarn this thin mm. and so I found it quite tricky and and ripped that out and redid it but you know second time through once you get in the zone I, I think my tension is pretty it looks fine to me it's not too loose is it no I think your tension has loosened off though I've got to say I don't think you're as tight as you used to be but this is it's this is a sport weight, and I did give you a four mil needle, I think, just because I thought your knits really tight, yeah. and I think it is a little bit looser than it used to be, but that's fine. It's, I think oh. it's time that we find out what else. Okie dokie. Is on your oh my eyes so twitchy today. <laughs> my next project is my second Neapolitan shawl. 
My new shawl pattern is now out on Ravelry. I put it out earlier than I was expecting actually. I was expecting really to be putting it out this coming weekend, but my test knitters just zoomed through it. You know, it was unbelievable. And I, oh, it's just thank you so much to Sarah, Sarah and Amber, thank you. Um, and you were so speedy and just fantastic. So it meant, I, I just thought, well, it's ready. I might as well just put it out. So it is up on Ravelry now. I was kind of, and I'll show you this one. I showed it last time, but this is my first one. It's Black as Swan, Falkland Island wool, four ply. And it's Merino spun with Shetland, I believe, yes. So this is what I used for my first one. And I'll quickly show it to you. This is the pattern. Oh, lovely. We had fun taking pictures of it up we on there. We did, uh... yeah. So that's the pattern. I was really trying to race through this second one because I thought, oh, I want to get it finished for recording. And I was really, really rushing and rushing and rushing. And then, do you know what? I just suddenly thought, why am I rushing this? The, the yarn's lovely. I'll talk about the yarn in a minute. And I, I really didn't want to rush it. And then I thought, well, maybe we'll have a little knit along for it. And a few people had said that want to do that. So I thought, right, okay, I'm going to stop rushing it. And it means then I can finish knitting mine whilst other people are knitting theirs. And I thought that might be a nice thing to do. So this is my second one. And I'm on section six now, which is, it's the last section before the ribbing. So I'm not far off finished, really. Um, and here we are. It's all kind of scrunched up, but you can see, I think you can see how lovely this one's going to be. And I'm just putting in now the green and blue, which I think looks lovely. I'll just show you. I've just started there. Look, can you see the green and the blue coming in? So the yarn I'm using for this one is the new yarn from Blacker, which is now available. You can go ahead and order this on their website. And I know that Julie at Suffolk Socks also stocks it. It's the Blacker Tamar Luster Blend and it contains, this is a four ply I'm using but they do do a DK weight as well. It's got in there, it's all different varieties of long wools so it's like Luster Blends. It's got Wensleydale, Teeswater, Cotswold and Black Leicester Longwood, Wood, Black Leicester Long Wool. And then they've actually blended that with some Cornish mule, just to give it a bit of bounce, a bit That's of extra. Horse. No, well, it's not a horse. It is a sheep, right. darling. It's a Cornish lamb's fleece, actually. And it, what that does is because the the long walls, obviously, by you know definition of it, their their staple length is very long, so very lustrous. Um, but the nature of that means that. It, it doesn't have a great amount of sort of bounce, if you like, of the shorter staple lengths. So they've mixed in some Cornish mule to kind of give it that extra bounce. So you get the luster and the sheen from the long wool and then you get the, the kind of extra bouncy nature from the Cornish mule. Before I actually chose my colours, they very kindly sent me a colour card. So these are all the colours that you can get. <gasps> Aren't they pretty? really lovely i love those pinks up at the top and i nearly went for pink as you can imagine but because this the previous one was i'd got pink in it, i thought no i'm gonna you know do a, a different one so the three colors i'm using are gwindra which is the neutral tiddy brook which is that bright acidy green and then tresillion which is that beautiful tealy blue so you know the, uh, it's lovely lovely yarn to knit with it's not like a merino you know whereas my first shawl is very soft and very squishy and very cosy this one is very light and airy and drapey you can probably see how airy if i hold it up that is so i love that i'm gonna have two very different shawls which i think is great i did actually knit a swatch up before i started knitting with it and this has been washed so you can kind of see the difference if i hold up that stocking stitch section like can you see the stitches are kind of a bit wibbly and you know not untidy but just a bit kind of wibbly this is the bit that's been washed and it's just beautiful look how lovely that blocks isn't it gorgeous so this one's been washed and blocked i gave it a really good soak it is it's not rough at all 
but it's definitely got a rustic feel to it but it's also got a beautiful sheen you know so if you if you love that kind of yarn you know more natural sort of yarn proper woolly wool yarn as Tilly would say Tilly you would love it I know Tilly would love this um, then th I would say this is definitely the yarn for you. It's really beautiful and really lovely to knit with. I will carry on knitting this and it'll be done for next time. And we'll start a knit along because a few people did want to do that. It looks quite glamorous, that one. Yeah, yeah. And I think once it's washed as well, it's just going to drape so beautifully. Whereas that one looks like something that you'd wear, like we wore or you wore when we went up yeah, you know, somewhere it's very, cold and Yeah, it's and windy. very warm and cosy. Yeah. yeah. Or if you wanted to be snuggly. Snuggly, it's very night. snuggly, yeah. So we'll start on it. It's quite, yeah, I love the. It's very soft, I know, yeah. I love it, I love that yarn. I've raved about it so many times. And what I love about I love that is, whilst you can knit it in any colours that you want, it just makes you think of the ice cream. Yeah, it does. Which I love. Yeah, yeah. And isn't, very Neapolitan, isn't that a, a way of talking about someone as well? Oh yeah, they're uh, very, very yeah. Neapolitan. No, that's cosmopolitan. Oh, uh, okay. Yeah, maybe. <laughs> Is it? I thought it was... You, they say you're cosmopolitan if you're, like, worldly travelled and... I don't know. I don't know now. Interesting. Somebody tell us. Yes. One of us sounds stupid. I have a feeling. One of us sounds stupid and I'm not sure which at this stage. <laughs> So yes, yeah, so we'll start the knit along today, which is the 11th, I believe, and it will run it till the 11th of April. What do you mean you believe? Is it the 11th today? <laughs> yes. Yes. And we'll run it till the 11th of April, so we've got a month, which is, I think it's plenty of time. You know, if you want to knit one, I think it's plenty of time to knit one. I'll start a thread in the <laughs> Ravelry group. Sarah Hepworth sneezed and she'd finished one. I know. <laughs> so I'm still... Uh, she is d oh. bishop of the Church of Knitting. I know, Sarah. Sarah's such a wonderful person. She really is, you know, and this is the second time she's testing it for me. And, you know, I don't ask her to knit these things quickly, but, you know, the next minute she's finished it and it's beautiful. And, oh, Sarah, if, if I could cuddle you, I would cuddle you. You know, you know that. We're giving you a virtual cuddle. We are, definitely. Yes, a month long knit along, casual, you know, and I'll have some sort of prize. It might just be a couple of pattern prizes that I give away for this one, because we've got a few knit alongs going at the moment, so that might be nice. And I don't think historically we've ever done pattern prizes, which might be fun. So if you want to knit one, then, you know, order your yarns, which I think is, oh, you've probably got yarns in stash, you know, I think that's part, the most fun thing, I think, is picking the colours. What else is on my needles? Well, with my uh, Eden Cottage yarn in Nightfall, which what are you is talking about? a blend of... Eden Cottage yarn? What is She's this? She's in Cumbria. Oh, this sorry. is from Canada. It said Eden on there. It is Eden. It's oh, not sorry. Eden. <laughs> <laughs> oh, gosh. I just have to rein you in so much. Everybody will be rushing out to Eden Cottage yarns to try and find this now. Where's the ball band? No, um, no. Ball band. I haven't got to. <laughs> Tracy is useless. But but I do know that it is a blend of cashmere, merino and nylon. It is. This yarn, if you remember, we showed this a couple of episodes ago. And I did ago. get the name right, it is Nightfall. Might have even been last episode. This came from Tracy of the Grocery Girls podcast, which is fantastic. If you've not watched, I think we've all watched the Grocery Girls by now, but it is a lovely podcast. And this came from Tracy, it was a gift from Tracy. And it's Eden Yarns. Is it called Adam and Eve? Oh, Tracy, have I got that? He's lost the ball band. I haven't you? lost the ball band, it's upstairs. Right, okay, well that's exactly no use to it, it down here, is it? Um, but it's beautiful yarn. I think it's, it's like a DK weight, and um, it's called Nightfall, as Dan said. I'll yes, show you. Yes. Look at that. <gasps> Isn't it gorgeous? And uh, Beautiful thank yarn. You. Sorry. And I'm knitting a handbrake cowl. It's only the second one that... Oh, no, I've knit, I've knit three. I was going to say. This is my third one. I knit one in pink, which I gave to my mum. Oh, yeah, you did. Yes, which is very nice, one. very soft. Oh. And I uh, gave it to her at Christmas, I think. Did I? Hmm. Yes, and I just Possibly. I came to the conclusion that the one I have, I wear it all the time, and it's so great. It, it, it's a bit scratchy. It's a it's a hand spun, isn't it? And I can't remember. It might be Shet. 
There might be quite a lot of Shetland in it. It's really um, great. But you Don't wear, it all, you wear, wear it, it all the time. time. It's not itchy to the point of, I can't wear this. It would just be nice to have a really nice soft one. And yeah. as soon as I, oh. It's really nice. Yes. Cashmere in its bad way. Don't scrub it on your Sorry, whiskers. I'm, not, I'm quite smooth. All oh, right, okay. I could pass the chiffon test. I don't think so. It is uh, really nice to be back knitting this. And you, you sort of very quickly start to re remember, you know, the, the enjoyment of knitting this pattern. And, you know, it, it just, it's good to be knitting something that flows. I like that. <laughs> what? Talk about that in finished objects, shall we? Yes, we will. <laughs> you need to get ready, because oh, I'm going to ask you it's right what else here. is on your well, it's right any there. second. It's right here. So I love the colourway. The colourway, I think, is going to go lovely with my blue coat. And my blue hat. Yes. Um, so yeah, it is. You'll be like the blue man, as Bryony calls like she, you sometimes. Yeah, I said to Kay yesterday <laughs> that that you know. You do like to coordinate, honey. She's so she's so cheeky, Bryony. She gets it all from Kay. Kay's terrible. I walked in one morning and I had on a blue shirt, a blue check shirt, and blue trousers. And she said, "What are you, the blue man today?" <laughs> A well, bird, you, you, a bird did something on the back of my car, and she goes, "Oh look, a bird's gone, gone to town." Said, no, she said, "Oh, that bird's had a good time on your car, <laughs> Daddy." <laughs> Thanks. Oh, she's funny though. She's funny. What else is on your needles? If it had a, probably, well, if I say if it had been up to me, but it is entirely up to me what I knit, isn't it? Mm. Silly how your brain works. Then I probably would have just been knitting on this next thing all the time and nothing else. But I didn't. But this is my pinky purple blanket. If you remember the little tale that I told about that last time. And I think I just knit four squares last time. And now I've done two, four, six, eight, nine, ten, eleven. So that's where I am now. Oh, look. Oh, isn't it lovely? I do really like how there's a bit of continuity. Not continuity is the wrong word. A, th a bit of a theme. You know with the colours. It's not as sporadic maybe that's what I want to say, as my big blanket, which I've also been knitting on this week, but this is the one that I really wanted to knit on. And I just like how it kind of, it ties it all in, doesn't it? And seems a, a bit less, a bit less busy to have, you know, pinks and purples going on. And I've really enjoyed being really, not really careful, but just you know, being very deliberate with the yarns that I choose. And, you know, Bryony's chosen a number of these. She'll go through, and as I've got it now in a little basket. And, you know, I went through and, and chose all the pinky, you know, purpley minis that I'd got. Lovely Amber sent me another parcel of fantastic minis. And some of it within it actually was some of Molly's yarn because these weren't superwash and she didn't want to put non superwash into her blanket because it would you know more than likely be going in the washing machine but Matt, I said you know I'm fine with it because I'd probably be hand washing it anyway because I tend to hand wash everything to be honest so I got some of Molly's lovely yarn which is beautiful and then this is one of my favorites actually that she sent it's three Irish girls a dawn sock and it's saltwater taffy <gasps> I just love that colour, look at that colourway, oh my goodness, I just love that colourway so much, so this is going to be the next one that I put in, and it's like, it's a more of a, more of a peachy pink, but I'd say it's definitely pink to me, that looks pink. So I'm really loving it, you know, and I love having a little basket full of minis, oh my goodness, and I've got loads of my Christmas opal ones. Bryony went through the bag of the Christmas opal ones and I chose, you know, all the ones that had got pinks or purples in. So that's brilliant to be adding those in. And, you know, so I've got loads to go at and it's just so fun. I've got my little, my little puppy snips in there to use, which are just the cutest little scissors ever. I need some more of those. So, yeah, so this one I'm knitting on 2.75 mil. So it's a size bigger than my other one and I'm using 43 stitches. Is that right? I think so. 43 stitches for this one. So yeah, I love it. I love it, love it. And I do love this bigger size. It does, as I said before, it does feel like it grows a bit quicker. Okay. What else <laughs> is on off my needles? Well, this is the Waiting for Winter Mittens oh, by Susan B. Anderson. Lovely Susan. And the yarn is oh, Hand Spun With Love by Deb at Fond and Fiber. Deb, look! It's absolutely oh. amazing to knit with. 
My favorite type of yarn is the yarns that go from very thin to very thick, and this <sighs> does that. Oh, it fills it me with really so much that. joy. I think I said this before, didn't I? But I it just... got so thick at one point, I couldn't yeah, get it through the needle. it's very thick, some bits. But, you know, it, it all kind of knits in, doesn't it? Does. It does. That's what I love. And I just, the stitches oh, look great. Hold, they, hold it. When I you consider, love it. Consider the fact that some of the, the, the bits of this yeah. are super thin and some are super yeah. thick. Look, it looks even, doesn't it? Don't you yeah, think? Yeah, it's amazing how that happens, isn't it? It makes me think of cereals. It makes oh. me think of growing crops. It's to me. It's like it's sprinkled with gold dust. That's what this yarn looks like to me. They look like kernels of wheat. Yeah, I mean it hasn't been washed yet, and it's very it's soft. You know, I'm not feeling any prickle at all. No. And it, you know it will be softer when it's had a nice soak. I'm sure. It, it, oh, it is. I just love it. I said that you finished it. We were watching TV in bed last night because the neighbours were being very noisy. So we went to bed to watch um, OJ Simpson, didn't we? Um, and you were finishing it off and I put it on in bed and I'm like, oh, can I keep it on in bed? And snuggle against it while I go to sleep. I really love... Oh, I love him. I weaving love him. your ends at the end of a project. So do I. I've said this before. I don't mind it at all. I'm not certain I would enjoy weaving in 4,000 ends on a blanket. No, I'm, but I do that as a go now. I think see. I love the process of casting on, yeah. knitting a project, finishing off, You're at the end, aren't you? End. And it's exciting to get it finished. It's I, like so giving I, birth to something. I enjoy it. And but without if, the pain. I mean, look, look in there, it's nice and neat, I think. No holes. And but That I was a 50-50 effort. It was. I mean, I, Dan's never done that before, so I showed him what I do, and I pick up two extra stitches and then decrease those off on that first round and that there was still two tiny little holes either side which really it's not difficult to sew those up but i think it does help oh i just love it i just i just want to look at it all day so there <laughs> it is there is uh, mitten number one and i want I'll, to knit mittens now i'll get going with mitten number two i might have to cast on the hand spun mitten <gasps> I was telling Susie Gawley on Instagram this morning, she posted a picture of some hand spun that she'd just done. Oh all my hail gosh. Susie, all hail Susie. This hand spun that's, if you don't follow Susie on Instagram, she's Knit Natural on Instagram, and she posted this um, hand spun last night that she'd just done, and it's absolutely beautiful. And I said to her, Susie, I've still got a skein of your hand spun that is just too precious to use, but actually I, I really want to make some that pole work that I used was the nicest yarn I, I think I've ever knit with and what I've got is Falkland <laughs> and I just love Falkland as you know I love Falkland yarns I'm fascinated by the Falkland Islands I've watched a series on it recently I just love the I, I love I love that it's in the middle of where it is is it, is it the Atlantic it's near in, Argentina the, yeah it's near Argentina obviously and I just love that it's thousands of miles away, yet it feels so British, you know, because it is a British, as we know, you know. We need to obviously. recruit a viewer is... in the Falkland Islands. Oh, we do. I just, I'm totally fascinated by the Falkland Islands. I really am, and um, we might have to do something. There kind must of be knitters future knit -along, on the I think. Falkland Islands. That would be so fun to do a knit along with Falklands wool. That would be so fun. We might have yeah. to do that at some point, actually, because I just. Like I said, I'm fascinated by it. So the, I found it yesterday, the, the skein of hand spun that um, Susie sent me, and it's absolutely beautiful. And really, I think I might have to cast on some mittens now. I've said all this. Tell us about your new socks oh, that you're knitting. Sorry. I haven't cast this next project on yet, but I've chosen yarn, and I've wound it, and it's all ready to go. I've finished something for Dan, so that just meant I could cast on another another thing of it and it's another pair of socks because you've just all you've been wearing lately has been your hand spun sock hand spun i've got hand spun on the brain susie gawley it's your fault <laughs> it's your fault um hand knit socks and that's all you've been wearing isn't it lately and well, i just think well what else is there to wear and i just think oh you know i need to knit him more because as a knitter should you be wearing bought cotton socks from Marks and Spencers or hand knit socks? <laughs> well, you know, I suppose each sock has its place. But when the weather's like it is, you know, hand, hand knit socks are... If the socks are as expensive as the pants in Marks and Spencers, well, I'm sticking with they, the hand knits. Well, they are as expensive, I'm sorry to say. Um, so I thought, right, I'll cast him on a new sock. And they never fit socks from Well, they shops. never fit you, darling, because your feet are so huge. 
I said that to Kay the other they day. They don't make socks. You know, have, I've yet to find a you know a commercial pair of socks that fits down properly. I, I came downstairs the other day. I can't remember in what context it was. I think I'd just been putting a sock on. I came down and I was like, why am I so big? She said, what do you mean? They're I said, my ridiculous. toes are like fingers. They're not. They're not like fingers. They're like, I don't know what they're like, but they're not fingers. Thanks. They're massive. You know, it's yeah. all feet anyway. We've had this talk before. So I went through all my yarns and I've chosen this yarn, which I've never knit before, but I just thought, oh yes, it's Berger de France. Oh, terrible accent. I'm so sorry, Isabel. Um, yeah. And the, the colour is Imprim. There goes all our French viewers. <laughs> I don't want to say that. Khaki. <laughs> Imprint khaki, I think it should be khaki, really, by rights, but there's the colourway. And it's lovely shades of blues and sort of um, sagey greens running into like neutrally sort of colours and greys. And I had two, I've got two balls because they're 51 balls, so I've wound one into a cake. Isn't it funny how they look? I kept one like this to show you. Don't they look different when they're wound? And then I'm actually going to do a contrast to heel and I've got some Reggie Tweed, grey Tweedy. I thought those two look really nice together, don't they? Do you think? Has anyone ever done um, a colourway called Tweedy Pie? Tweedy Pie? I don't know. I think There's you Tweety should. Tweedy Pie. I think Deb at Fondant Fibre did Tweedy Pie. But Tweedy Pie Tweedy would pie. be cool. A sort of pinky Tweedy... Pie. Yeah, no, but not pinky, yellowy. Yellowy, yeah. Yes. So that's going to be my next sock for Dan. It'll just be a, a plain, you know, plain sock. Um, and I do 72 stitches for Dan on a two and a half mil needle, and they seem to fit him really well. And she set herself a challenge um, to get them cast on and finished by the time the next podcast comes around. <laughs> that's not going to happen with a 12 and a half inch foot. Because oh I have to knit, I knit generally to about 11 inches on the foot and then do the toe and that seems to work really well. But I do have a formula now and I knit by row numbers. Okay, and, formula know, is buy Dan socks from Marks. I know, <laughs> I'll regret it as soon as I've been knitting on one for a bit. I'll be like, oh, why am I knitting these again? But you know, you, Any knitting you love project, your handmade though, socks. If you and, knit it for someone who then wears it and enjoys I know, it. I that's what I was saying, yeah. yeah so... That's going to be a new cast on shortly. I think enough of this waffle. I think it's time that we crushed the... Crushed? Crushed. That's a new word. Oh, it could be like a stitch. <laughs> crush stitch. A crush. Oh, no. Oh. I sound like uh, James, uh, Sean Connery. I <laughs> <laughs> too, yeah. <laughs> uh, I think it's time we crossed the threshold. Oh, my tea's gone at cold. At Skeldale House. Mm. Very, very exciting. Now, the one thing that didn't make the cut on here, but did in the pictures that we posted to the Facebook group for the patrons who were in the private Facebook group was some of the pictures upstairs of some of the tools that they oh, used yeah. to use. Some of them are frightening. Wow. Real like instruments of torture. Those Especially poor when animals. Reading, yeah, that, you know, in those days, the, uh, anaesthetic was rare. Yeah. So, you know, they would heat things up and... You know, Wowzers. Yeah. Amazing job. Such an important job as well as, as we'll, we'll cover now. So let's go back to us outside Skeldale House and explore some more of Harriet Country. Welcome back to part two of Favourite Places to Knit Harriet Country. Here we are outside Skeldale House and it's time for us to go inside and have a look around. We're going to explore uh, the World War II bunker and, and the flat where they used to live uh, and really learn everything about who James Herriot really was. We're in Skelda. <laughs> this is nuts. It's so cool. This is it. This is the doorway that James and Siegfried um, and, and of course Tristan um, and then all the people uh, who came and brought their, their pets and their animals to come and get uh, treated will have come in. And the amazing thing for me is, I was speaking to my mum the other day, she found a diary from 1959. My granddad used to race greyhounds, one in particular called Jenny, she won loads of races. Uh, they used to live in Morthella, which is not far from here, and they will have come here. And, and I mean, that for me is such a thrill, so that's a direct family connection with this building, Skeldale House, the real place. Sorry, I'm so excited. This is the front room. I want to show you the floor. Coat hooks. Look at the floor. Look at the floor. It's minted Hello tiles, ground. I would have thought. 
And then as we come round here, who, who's in here? Mrs. Pomfrey. It's a bit scary. Oh. Look. Go in, go in. I don't want to trip on Look, oh, she, she's barking. <laughs> Would you believe it? It's Mrs. Pumphrey's house. Oh my goodness. Except she wasn't called Mrs. Pumphrey. Her name was Marjorie Warner. Miss Marjorie Warner was never married and she lived there. She bought that house an awful long time ago. I don't know specifically when, but I know it was many, many years ago because she was an older lady when um, James was taking care of her and Tricky Woo. Now Tricky Woo's real name was Bambi, but all the stories are true. She used to feed him all sorts of crazy things. And they would regularly get called out, wouldn't they, to deal with all sorts of, of weird ailments. And why did they put up with it? They put up with it because Miss Marjorie Warner was extremely wealthy. And Tricky Woo used to send Uncle Harriet little packages. And they would have in things like caviar and all sorts of things, which the vets would never be able to get their hands on. The other thing I really love is, see the house is right there. If we look over here, we see more houses. And if we look over here, we see more houses. But right here, there's nothing. And why is there nothing? Because Miss Marjorie Warner was so cool, she bought the house and she bought the field opposite. So no one built a house on here because she did not want her view of the Hambleton Hills right over there, which is where we started our journey today. She didn't want it messing with. It does look pretty grand. I mean, the, the house that we took you to last episode was a lot more grand than this. It was obviously an old um, nunnery, wasn't it? I can't remember what it was called now, but it was absolutely beautiful place in the middle of the Yorkshire Dales. This is not in the middle of the Yorkshire Moors or the Yorkshire Dales. We're slap bang in the middle of um, Thirsk and Sowerby, which is like one little town. Um, but it is really grand and, and a really lovely house. And it's a real thrill to be here. Just think, Miss Marjorie Warner and Bandy, Tricky Woo and Mrs Pumphrey used to live right there. So this was the home that James shared with Helen after their marriage in November 1941. A year later, and now expecting their first son Jim, the inevitable happened. His call-up papers arrived to go and serve his country in World War II. During that horrendous time, James felt possibly the blackest of his life. And on the day he left, he wrote this letter to Helen. My darling Helen, I have just a few minutes before lights go out to write this, and I'm feeling very tired after a day of tremendous activity. I feel heaps better than I did this morning. I thought it was the cold that made me feel so rotten, but it wasn't. It was leaving my little wife that I did. Honestly, Helen, I've never felt so completely lousy in my life, and believe me, it's been a lesson to me. I'll never leave my little wife again. It's funny, I haven't known you for very long, and yet you've become my whole life to me, and when I left Thirsk, I felt I was leaving part of myself behind. After spending a month doing his initial training in the RAF at Regent's Park in London, James received some amazing and welcome news. His main training would take place in Scarborough, 40 miles east of Thirsk, a short drive for him to come and visit his family whenever he wanted, and he regularly did go AWOL. James proved to be an ace in Tiger Moths, far surpassing his fellow trainees. And what an amazing period of his life after training as a vet in Glasgow to suddenly find himself flying Tiger Moths off the east coast of England. So this is the World War II air raid shelter underneath Skeldale House. You come through a stair as you've seen, down the stairs and we're here. And there's some bedrooms down there, well bedrooms, there's one room with some bunk beds down there and then in here to be in the living area because there's, there's food in there, there's like a little cubby with food in, there's a loo over there, there's some bins. Hi. James actually signed up for the RAF before he met and married Helen um, and he got his call up papers uh, when his first child was due unbelievably. Um, Helen actually moved out when uh, the, the, the majority of the war was going on. Uh, she was here for a little bit. Um, but obviously, uh, Siegfried, Donald Sinclair will have been here or will have used this air raid shelter. So what an amazing three years, four years in fact, that James had had. He'd started work here in 1940. In 1941, he'd married Helen. In 1942, he'd gone off to train in the RAF. And in 1943, after suffering greatly with actually sitting in cockpits 
Uh, he had a, a very unfortunate condition which made it very hard for him to sit down in confined spaces like a cockpit of a, an aircraft. The RAF did try and rectify that with some operations which actually didn't go very well. When those operations didn't work, they actually discharged him from the RAF. And November 1943, he returned home. But it was all change here at Skeldale House. Siegfried had fallen in love with his wife-to-be, and they had moved in. Helen had decided, with another lady living um, at Skeldale House, that the right thing to do was to actually move out. So Siegfried was living here with Audrey and Helen was actually living somewhere completely different and we'll go and discover where that was right now. Uh, sewing basket. There's wool in it. There's the wool in that. There is, look. When James returned from his time in the RAF, he'd found that Helen had moved in with her parents here in Sowerby. Now, it's not far from Thirsk. Mrs Pumphreys is just up there on the left. Um, but it's barely changed, supposedly, since the, the wartime. And uh, James loved it here. Some of his happiest years were actually spent here. Um, and one of the reasons for that is the Crown and Anchor, which is right here. They lived in a house called Blakey View, which is very close to here. We're actually thinking, if you look there, it says Harriet Gardens. We're just wondering if the house has been knocked down and they've built houses on top of it. So we might have a glance at that in a moment. But the Crown and Anchor was his regular haunt. Um, and he used to go there, he loved spending time there with his father-in-law. And where did the majority of our characters spend a good proportion of their time? In the Drovers, and there it is. It is, of course, the Golden Fleece in Thirsk Town Square, and if you look back at that very first picture from 1940 and compare the square to how it looks today, it really hasn't changed very much. But it's time to go into the Drovers Inn and to sample their fare. And do you know what? It was such an exciting thing to walk through the door of that pub. Kay, of course, had a cup of tea. I think I had a coffee. But as we pan around now, you're going to get to see the bar. It's the bar at the Drovers Inn where Siegfried and James and Tristan so many people had a drink. In 1945, Siegfried moved out of Skeldale House and James and Helen moved back in, in a home that they would share for the next eight years. That is one of the small treatment rooms where James would see dogs and any small animals who came into the practice. This was just uh, one of the side rooms, I think it was a consultation room, you could see the TV there running or creatures great and small. Now, James worried greatly about his wife in his time at Skeldale House because of the size of it. She would spend a good proportion of her time cleaning the many rooms and so he was very keen to at some point in the future move out and he did but for the time being this was their home. He's an Argo, look at her. There's actually things in these jars. In 1953, they moved here to this very normal house on the road between Thirsk and Sowerby, not far from Mrs. Pumphreys and not far from the surgery. And it was here in 1969 that Alf White sat down to write If Only They Could Talk that would become All Creatures Great and Small. For the rest of his life, he and all the characters of his life would become known by their alter egos. And action! Keep the camera on there. One second, please. <laughs> I can see you. Where's the camera? And turn over. Uh, see. I don't know. What can you see? I can um, see the plant action. on. The, I can see the table. Less than ten years later, the series and the lives of all our favourite characters really took flight with the birth of the TV series of All Creatures Great and Small. Yeah, it is just a reconstruction of the set, but crumbs. I mean, it just. There's the music. Yeah. It's just stunning. And look at the cameras. Thank goodness we don't have to use these when we're podcasting. <laughs> wow. I mean, that must have been what it was like when you were on set. You must have been able to see. Yeah. Crap. 
crumbs. Here's the car. Gosh. I'm sorry for my clicky shoes and heels are so noisy. That's the original. It's the car restored. Wow, yeah. it's the original car. Yeah. That's amazing. I'll go just take it. Oh, the phone's ringing down. Where is it? Where is it? I don't know. Sounds like it's over there. It's there. Dan's going to answer the phone. Quick, quick, quick. It was an irate farmer. <laughs> he had a foal who needed treating, so I'm, I'm going. James and Helen moved to a village just down there called Thirlby. And here we are driving through Thirlby in what is really the quintessential Yorkshire village and how wonderful it was that James found himself now in the heart of the countryside that had captivated him for the 38 years that he'd lived in that area. And there is the house where he wrote his final book, The Lord God Made Them All. And he used to love walking this path, specifically up from Gormire Lake just down there. It's absolutely stunning and it is billed the finest view in England. And to be honest with you, I don't think I've ever stood anywhere and been able to see quite so much. I mean, you can see the dales over there on the right, um, and then you can look right across. And this here, and the hills behind, is the Hambleton Hills, is very much the patch that James had covered throughout his years, based in Thirsk at Scale Dale House just over there. James Herriot died in 1995 of cancer, but his books, or Creatures Great and Small, and the TV series, have left such an amazing legacy of this. What I loved about All Creatures Great and Small was the feeling that it still evokes for me today, and that's a warm Sunday night, sat in front of the fire, and my grand sat in a favourite chair, my mum has probably just cooked something lovely, uh, and we're sitting down as a family to watch All Creatures Great and Small, and, and that picture, the way it was filmed, it was like a warm, soft focus, wasn't it? And it, it really sums up for me a life that I think we all aspire to. Um, a life set in a totally stunning part of the world, doing an amazing job, which of course he was doing right after the war. Because if you think about it, how important were crops and farming feeding the nation. And th th the beauty of this whole situation, I think, and it's only something I've, I've recently come to realise, is that life was set right here in our home, Yorkshire. It's finished. Our Harriet journey is over. It is. It's been really wonderful to realise that the story, because I'm stupid, because I never stopped to think about where it actually went on, because I didn't know. You know, I, I had an idea where, where things happened, and I knew the surgery was based in Thirsk, but you know, the, the places which he was covering were all the places which are our favourite places to knit. Jervo and Byland yeah. and you know ev pretty much everywhere other than you know when we've gone further afield to places like Chatsworth everywhere that we've taken you to was an area that was covered by the the, the practice mm. in Thirst because it, mm. it just covered such a huge area because as we've spoken about a lot back then you didn't go to the vets very often no not with the pet no it was I mean, very rare yeah I mean if if you know, we had pets growing up and if your pet got ill, they died and that was it really. They're catered for a lot more now than they were when, you know, when I was young. And I think vets were more for farm, farm, you know, farmers. It's been an absolutely wonderful thing to do. And we've only been able to do, because it's the biggest one that we've ever done. Yeah. We've covered the most ground. Yeah, yes. 
I'd and say. The only way that we, we were able to do this was because of our amazing patrons. Yes. Because the amount of time. The amount of time. That, that we had to took. invest in it, yeah. which was just the business. And that. And we loved it. We had we had a great time doing it. Absolutely. And it, it's probably a good moment just to, to, to check in on Patreon. Yes. We started our Patreon campaign uh, last May. We did. Uh, with the yeah. initial goal of getting through the first milestone, which would enable us to effectively do this mm. and, and, you know, be able to, you know, put food on the table and, and do this. And you guys saw us through that, which has been just amazing. So now this year is very much about building on that initial mm. uh, support that we've had and moving it on to the next level. And Kay and I spoke the other day and I don't think we've ever really put across exactly what we're wanting to do in a, in a clear way. So I've changed the, I've been on the, yeah. the Patreon site and made some changes. We've also put a new video on the front of Patreon. The plan now, is not only to push the boundaries with favourite places to knit, and the wheels are in motion right now for international favourite places to knit. Oh, yes. Which is going to be mm. extremely exciting. We're going to be doing that in a very unique and cool way, so watch this space. The pledges that our patrons make supports this main podcast. We give things, you know, we produce additional things to thank you for it, but the support for the main podcast... The, the idea is that we use that support to then start to develop new shows. Mm. So we've touched a little bit on yeah. uh, the Baker of Best Picnic, which Kay and I will present. Uh, and the plan is to launch that when we get through Milestone 3. But also, we're already starting to look at potential presenters of new shows that mm. we will then produce. Because what we want to have is we want to have a channel with no advertising, which is, the, 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 there's no sort of backhanders going on, so no. you're saying things about certain things that you don't really believe. Honest programming, yeah. and a range of programming, with a range of presenters, because you don't want to see our faces all the time. No, I don't want to see my face all the time. <laughs> you want to see new things, and, and exciting new things, and you know the, the great thing about the, the, the Patreon, um, community it is a community it is, you know? it, it's enabling us to talk to people and uh, get you know real sort of nitty yeah. gritty feedback and test things out see what works see what doesn't work yeah but the point we're at right now is we need to push through and the distance between milestone one and two and three is a quarter of what it took yeah. us to get to milestone to get, one it's yeah. not very far yeah we're so close to milestone three yeah if you help us get us through milestone three we can immediately then start to push forward with developing brand new shows and starting to develop this as a channel which is what we want to do for you and we really can't thank the patrons enough can we you know it's and you all need to thank the patrons too because yes. if were it not for them we would not be here no we really wouldn't if you look at how the the world is changing and how you can go out there and you can get what you want when it comes to entertainment yeah. with it's Netflix and, and Amazon and all those things. Yeah. Why can't we all do the same yeah. with knitting? Why and not? Kay and I spoke about a really cool thing right before we started filming we today. Did, yeah. That we shall say nothing, say nothing. Uh, at the moment. We, we'll talk to you patrons on the next pop and, yeah. and see what you think as well. But I think that could be so exciting. Yeah. So that's enough, uh, Patreon. If you enjoy the show, if you would like to see a, uh, a Bakery Bears channel with a range of programming on, please now come and support us um, and help us. Uh, create that for all of us. Yeah, good. What's off your needles, Sorry, Kay Jones? I was still oning my needles. I finished the socks. Wow. <laughs> I finished Dan's Star Wars socks, and I don't think I'd even cast on the second one, had I, last time. I was having that orange yarn dilemma. Lovely Sarah came to my rescue and sent me some orange yarn. Amazing. Sarah, thank you so much. So she motivated me really to, to get this one going. And this is the BB-8 one. Oh, didn't it come out nice? And it's yes, beautiful. It, it really is that big. <laughs> and here's the R2D2 one. I've washed these, they are washed and blocked. 
So we've got a R2D2 and a BB-8. So I used, apart from the orange, it's all drops fable and I doubled it. Now it's a very, it's quite a rustic yarn is drops fable. It's, I think opal is softer than it, but they're fine, you know, they're going on your feet and they'll be absolutely fine. I think these will wear like iron, I, I hope so anyway because it's doubled. And I love the BB-8 one, didn't you? When you can I wear them? them? You can wear them now, I've shown them. So I can wear you them know. later? You could wear them later, Excellent. yeah. And I did have a bit of a jog where, you know, where I changed yarns. You can see in the grey stripe there, there's a bit of a jog, but you know, hey ho, I can live with that. So I think they came out really nice. So the orange is an opal, an opal solid. And I think the colourway is just orange. So I've got a whole big ball of that. And I always historically thought I wasn't an orange person, but actually I really like knitting orange. So maybe I, maybe, you know, might do some more orange projects. And certainly I'm gonna put orange in for heels and toes and things like that now that I've, I've got some of it. Cause I think it, it's a lovely accent color. I've never seen um, socks quite like that before. Well, you won't have because I made them up. No. But you, you know when you you take a design, yeah, and then you use the same design on a second sock, but, but with different all colours. Different colours. Yeah. Well, I was inspired to do this because one of our viewers did this. Is it Florence? Oh, I might have got I might have got that wrong. I apologise if I have. But she did that, and I thought, oh, I could totally do that because I don't really want to knit another huge sock exactly the same. And I thought, why not do a BB-8 one as well? And I think it came out really nice. They're cool. So I am introducing these to you as a pair of unmatching socks. The thing is that they are matching though, because the do design... Match. Yeah, 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 I think you're right. I think you're right. So, you know, I think when... But look how big they are, aren't they enormous? That's, that's not even a hard sell, is it? On, on the whole matching socks thing. No. I think I could sell these for a fortune in the shops. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, in, in the Disney shops. In the Disney shops, yeah. yeah. Slipper socks. Slippers, well, they are really slipper socks with it being... BBA, and, and then what Disney would do is they would stick in one of those those things which you squeeze mm, on the inside, oh, and right. one would sound like yeah. BB-8, and the other would sound... And I did rip out the toe and do it grey. Can you remember? I'd done it all white, and I did rip it out and do I it grey. I guilted her into it. I guilted myself into it, <laughs> but... You know, it was, let me tell you, I did have a number of ends to weave in. It was a bit of a thing. <laughs> but I'll show you the inside. Where's, where have I woven them in? It's pretty good, actually. I mean, this is the area where they're all woven in, all sort of in this area. And I think it's okay, isn't it? It's not perfect. But there was quite a lot to weave in, so I didn't want it to be all sort of bulky. But I think it's okay. So they're all done, so you can have those now. Oh, I need to take a picture of them for my Ravelry page. I haven't done that yet, so I'll take a picture. Look at this. Ha ha. What's off my needles? Well, I'll tell you. It's a Declan's hat. Shall I pop it on? Yeah, in just a minute. Cause I've I haven't washed I, it yet. I quite like having it on my hand. Do you? Yeah, it feels it's like nice. It's a huge mitten. It's, it, it, I, I definitely enjoy doing cables. And I wonder what I should do next. Hmm. Someone please suggest. I wonder. An, Oh, that sounds like you had an answer in mind. No, I don't have oh, an okay. answer. I was just thinking. Someone suggests what would be a good next stage cable pattern. Oh, right. Cable pattern, right. Yeah. Okay. You, yeah. Because, you know, I'd like to do some more cables. Right. But, you know, to take a proper next step, not go straight for that amazing thing that was posted on the oh, patrons group. Full on. Cabled cardigan. Yeah, though. yeah, Not you quite know. Ready for that? Maybe a minute. Are there cows with cables? Well, there will be, darling. Yeah. Maybe a yeah. A cow with a cow, or whatever you think might be cool to do next. Please, because mm. I think it's important that I carry on with it quick, because otherwise you'll sort of forget the the, the skills you've learned. Oh look! It's amazing, yarn. Yeah. Isn't it lovely? Look at that. And I think it goes with my eyes. Do you think it goes with my? Pale eyes. I didn't get a lot of flow from this project, to be to be honest. I, I will knit another one. I'll definitely try doing another one. So it's 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 not... really nice. Mm. But it, it, I I wish that I just felt. I love the decreases. No, can you see them? The mistakes are great, aren't they? Mistakes. Yeah. Well, I, 
I missed. Oh, there's not really that many. My hair's going to be a mess now. Not really that many mistakes, is there? We managed to put them right as we went. Yeah. But I just, I don't know how, but I missed mm. certain things, so I had to do certain things on the round after, and I, um, but you know, it was on the decreases. Yeah, so, it's not noticeable. I mean, no, to, to look there, mm. it, it looks okay. Um, so I will do another, but I'd like to do something different first, so mm. please help me with what that is. What else is off your needle? I've just got one other little thing. If you remember last time, I was having that um it looks beautiful. Yeah, oh, it's cute, isn't it? I was having that um and ahhing session over my um, Muppet knit along, my Muppet knit for the knit along. And I was knitting some socks and I just thought they looked a bit small. So I had a good long think about what I was going to do. And I thought, you know what? I I kind of just wanted, at that point, I just wanted to knit something quick and enjoyable and, you know, just something that gave me a little bit of joy for an hour or so. And I suddenly remembered that I really enjoyed knitting the little hearts from Susan Claudino. It's part of the Gnomies Where the Heart Is pattern on Ravelry. I knit them before and I've also knit the little gnomes. Bryony's got a few of them. I thought, oh, do you know what? I might knit some of those hearts with that yarn. And then I thought, well, it's self-striping, fingering, how am I going to do that? So what I decided to do was I doubled it, but I doubled it so that it was, it produced a marling effect. So the stripes lined up, but there were different colours. It was sort of as if I'd, I wound off, you know, a ball and then I wound off the next ball plus another stripe. So that when I then wound them together, they were offset. And it worked really well. I mean, this is the ball it produced. Isn't that fun? So it's still striping, but it's striping, you know, within the two colours. And I've still got half a ball that's not, you know, that's still wound up as it was. Because I, I want, you know, I could do something else with that half a ball, maybe a sock head hat. So what I, I, what I knit was I knit a couple of these little hearts, and I have done two, but one of them went off to Nana Wendy as part of her Mother's Day present. But this is the other one that I knit. Look! I think it's lovely. Isn't what it went off to Nana Wendy as part of her present? One of these. Oh. Um, so yeah, so I've done two, and I'm going to do another one. It's this is hanging on our new, on my new bedside table. We bought some new bedroom furniture a few weeks ago, and it's a dark wood. We've never had dark wood furniture before. We love it, don't we? It's really yes. nice, and it looks really nice just hung on. You know one of the drawers on my bedside table so I'm gonna knit another one and put it on Dan's side and like I said it just it's just such a lovely little project to knit and sometimes I think you need that don't you you don't want you know if we sometimes have a lot of bigger projects on the go it's just nice just to sit down for an hour and think right I'm gonna start and finish this project right now and I'm gonna have a pretty little finished object at the end of it and this is such a lovely heart design and I, oh, I just really, really think it's just such a lovely shape. And I love the way the decreases are down the side. It's just really nice. And I, I, I love how it came out in this yarn. It's so fun, I think. You know, when you consider this as a self-striping fingering weight, and it doesn't look like that. Now it looks more like a hand spun, I think. Don't you think it looks like a hand spun? really loved it and like I said I'm gonna knit another one for Dan's side and then I could well do something else with the rest of that ball and I did keep the little bit of sock that I knit I, I pulled it off the needles obviously but I wanted to, I thought right I'm just gonna check it I'm gonna put it on my foot and it did go on but it was very stretched and this this is entirely my shape of my huge thick ankles I think I've got huge thick ankles nothing to you know the yarn is lovely it's nothing to do with the yarn at all. It's just my silly anatomy. So, yeah. So, I love it. You know, and it, from a project that I was just thinking, oh, gosh, you know, what am I going to do? It just turned into such a joyous little thing to knit. And I just love What's it. What's the difference in thickness between... Th oh, gosh, that's much thinner, isn't it, than... It's a lightweight fingering, I think, yeah. that was the... What I should have done, really, is cast on 68 stitches. I should have thought on a bit... Because some sock yarns are thinner than others, you know? Yeah, yeah. That's not uncommon at all, no, you know? It's, it's time to find out what's on your TV. And we need to know what is on your TV. Because yeah. we've just finished watching something. We did. So we need to find something else. Although we are watching something that we're enjoying. 
and it would be interesting to see if you're enjoying it too. So we finished mm. watching the second season of The Affair. We did. It wasn't anywhere near, although there was a couple of shocking bits, it wasn't anywhere near as racy as the no, first one. No, that's probably true actually. There wasn't any of that going on in the last few episodes really, was it there? It actually got on with telling a story yeah. and the story yeah. was pretty good. Yeah. And also, I think what was refreshing... We was quickly guessed at the end. We both went... Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> what, but it was right at the very end. What was refreshing about it is... The, the main characters, I think we've said a few times, we're not certain who you're supposed to like. Mm. But actually, it, it admitted that. And I, I don't think you are supposed to like certain characters. Because no. I don't think the character even likes himself. No. Given what he's been saying. Yeah. So it, it definitely... I've enjoyed watching it. Yeah, I've enjoyed watching it More than the too. first one. And there's going to be a second. A third one. A third. Sorry. There's going to be a third season. Right. So, uh, we but finished... it have to be, really, the way it ended. Yes, absolutely. So we finished watching The Affair. And that was good because that meant that we had two episodes, although we've watched one. Mm -hmm. We had two episodes of O.J. Simpson to watch. Mm. And that's great, but probably by tonight... We'll have finished watching that. We will. And what are we going to watch then? And we don't engage well. We don't... We, we just like sit down and go on with watching something. So we're very much a box set type of, yeah, type of person. Yeah. Oh, we've still got the Navy School thing. We, we do have we? some Navy School things to watch. I mean, that's good knitting TV because mm. you can have a conversation and not really lose track on where you're yeah, at with that. Yeah. But I, I was wondering if anyone's been watching The Night Manager, which is with... Oh, the, the chat... I can't remember his name, but he was in... Who? Tom Hiddle, Tom... Tom Hardy, no. Tom Hiddleston. Yes. Right. And also Hugh Laurie. Hugh Laurie. He's playing the bad guy. And he's probably brilliant right, at that. he's probably good. Yeah, I love Hugh Laurie. So that could be really good. I wonder if any of you have seen that. Mm, let us know. We started recording Dr. Thorne, is it? Oh, yeah. We've got that to watch. Which could be really good, but there's yeah. only three episodes. Which it's a bit is... like Cranford, isn't it? Did anybody watch Cranford that when good. that was on? I know Glenn Spyshot will have watched Cranford. Um, and I rewatched it recently, but that was only a short run because it was based on books. Wasn't and th it? this again yeah. is based on yeah. a book. But I've also heard that he's working on. I, I always think of him as Kill Willie from. Oh, uh, right. What's his name? The guy who wrote Downton Abbey. Julian remember. Fellows. Yeah, Julian Fellows. Was he Kill Willie? Yes. I didn't know that. So I didn't really watch Monarch of the Glen. I didn't really watch Monarch of the Glen. I you really did. loved Monarch yeah. of the Glen. The early ones where Alexander, yeah, whatever I'd, his name is in. I it. watched a few of them when, when he went and that other fella came and I Not didn't, very good. didn't really like him. He went into it. the West End in The Bodyguard playing the Kevin oh, Costner right. role. Right, right. Um, so. I would be really interested to know if anyone has seen... I wonder if it's on outside of this country yet, Dr. Mm. Thor. I wonder Dr. if it's Thor, launched no. everywhere. Yeah, Who knows? But have you seen The Night Manager? Was it any good? I recorded a film the other day called American Hustle, right. which we haven't seen. I wondered if you've seen it and if it's any good. Please let us know, because if you tell me it's rubbish, I'll just delete it. Because <laughs> we're not interested in sitting down and watching Tripe. But it, it won, uh, won Oscars, that's always about well, to Well, that's it's never... It's a comedy, though. Well, I wouldn't watch something just because it won an Oscar, because quite often it's random, isn't it? It does look good, though. I mean, it looked good to me. Right. But I could be completely wrong. I think my mum went to see it and thought it was great. Right. Which is normally a fairly good sign. Uh, but, I've, I mean, of course, we are... Although you fell asleep last night, was that just because you were tired? Yeah. That's probably why you woke up so early. Probably, yeah, because I was asleep by half nine, so... Uh, the O.J. Simpson thing is just fascinating. It is what it is, yeah. I mean, it, <sighs> it really is, and you can see now what's what's happening, and you know, and how it was manipulated. You know, the evidence and things like that. We're just judging this by what is portrayed, obviously, but I think it is what what happened, isn't it? Well, they'll, they'll be taking artistic license yeah. to an extent, I'm sure. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I'm reading that O.J. Simpson book at the moment, If I Did It, The Confessions of the Killer, which he wrote, and then, as I've spoken about before, it got awarded to Ron Goldman's family. It, it just, it gives me mixed feelings about all of it. it mm. It's really odd. It's really odd. I mean, what an interesting moment in history mm. to sort of look back on. and Because mm. there's no doubt, I think, that she was living a fairly wild life. Mm. 
and there was you know she was keeping some fairly interesting characters as friends and right. she was taking a lot of drugs and right so it's never good is it the, the whole story tends to feel a bit sort of tawdry and mm, which but, I'm sure it you know yeah tragic though very tragic tragic but good TV and, and good acting you very know, good acting David Schwimmer doing a great job love David Schwimmer and John Travolta's fabulous it really is he? now I've seen him on something else recently and they've properly gone to town yeah because on... he looks very portly on this doesn't he yeah and I don't think he is I think it's all padding that yeah it is yeah definitely you know, he's, he's a, still a very handsome man, isn't he, John Travolta? He's a method actor. Yes, and he's very good at it. Yeah. Mm. It's the Endy Bits. Endy Bits. Uh, so the, the knit-alongs. Knit-alongs, yes. We've still got the two knit-alongs going on. So the Gorgeous Garments knit-alongs, knit-along for the patrons, as I spoke about recently. We've got 14 entries so far on that, so fantastic garments. And somebody, oh, Baba Lux. Who's Baba Lux? Oh, she's from Germany. Yes. Sorry, I, I'm just saying what your um, Ravelry name is, Instagram name. She's knit a penguono from Stephen West, which right. is this this mad garment. It's kind of it's a cardigan, but you can wear it both ways up. You can wear it upside down and the other way around. But she's yeah. done it in these fantastic colours. Go and have a look on the FO thread if you want to see it. And I know Danny's knitting one as well, Little Bobbins. Um, but it's just fantastic that that will end on the 31st of March. And I have now got two prizes for that, so I thought I would show you. The first prize is, now we got a few skeins of this when Deb dyed this up, and Dan is, are you still knitting with this? Yeah. You are, aren't you? And I thought, oh, wouldn't it be nice to give away one of these, because it's kind of precious, I think. And it's a skein of the Valum Hadriani that lovely Deb dyed up for us. This is on... It's 100% blue face Leicester, 224 metres. It's like a DK weight, I would say this. DK to worsted of the Valum Hadriani, which is beautiful. So, you know, cowl, mittens, <laughs> um, you know, hat, anything at all like that would be fantastic. So that's one prize. And then the other prize, this was inspired by the fact that Downton Abbey has just finished, I know, in America. We watched it a while ago. And also it's pertinent as well because that view from the top of Sutton under Whitestone Cliff is where Downton Abbey yeah. is set. Because it's set, wasn't it, around Ripon and yes. all around there. And uh, yep. crazy that, of course, it's filmed. Down in the south, south of, of England, London, yeah. But he actually set it, the idea was Ripon that and it York was up here. And Thirst, yeah. I think, has been mentioned quite yes. a lot. They go to yes, Thirst. they do. So I sewed up, I had just a tiny bit of this fabric left. So I've sewed up one of my little notions pouches in the Downton Abbey fabric. Wouldn't it be great if Downton Abbey actually was that up here? That print didn't line up quite as well on the back. But I literally just had a little piece left, but on the front you've got a nice print of it. And then I lined it, it will have a little zipper pulley thing on. I lined it with a really pretty, um, like, tiny floral print, which I thought was very Downton Abbey. I'm going to start a petition so, that we should move Highclere Castle to Yorkshire. To Yorkshire, yeah. <laughs> So that'll be the second prize. So two prizes for the garment knit along. And then I showed the prizes last time for the Muppet knit along. And so we've got three prizes. I'll quickly just zip around them again in case you didn't see the last episode. We've got a skein from Eternity Ranch, which is, shh, I'm hunting wabbits, which I think is meant to be to look like Elmer Fudd, isn't it? Now yeah. you said that. And this is 100% New South Wales domestic wool, very squishy, 350 yards. So I suppose it's like a sport weight, maybe that one. Very pretty. And then we've got a skein of the Regia, the Arnie and Carlos the third in the design line of that. And then there's the lovely bag. I'll try not to crinkle this too much. The lovely bag from Jody, Mrs. Brown's bags for the Grocery Girls. Lovely podcast. And then there will also be a fourth prize of a bag from me. That just is probably a pertinent time for me just to quickly talk about sewing. Um, I will make that bag. I'll make it next week. But because of... Because of this situation that I've had ongoing with my back, and I'm still having physiotherapy for it, which, 
you know, it's, it's, it's been pretty good actually. I'm sure it is helping. It's made it really difficult for me to sew. And I, I have finished now all of the bag club bags. They've, you know, that three month club has finished and they all went out the third month at the beginning of last week. So you should all be getting those now if you live in sort of America. I think there was one went to Canada and Bermuda. You should all be getting those around now. So that club has finished. And I, I'm, I'm really, I'm going to have to have an enforced kind of break from sewing because whatever motion, you know, there was something that was aggravating it. I can't put my finger on whether it was the cutting out, whether it was the, you know, just the general, you know, my posture or what it was, but something is aggravating whatever is going on with my back. So I, I did decide, it, it was a horrible decision, but I did decide I'm going to have to take a little break. I'm not sure how long that's going to be. Don't know how long this is going to take really to resolve but that does mean that it has you know freed up time for me to do things like de design time and that which, brings us you know, on is, to is a potential great. new um, design doesn't it yes now you can't say very much about this no i did have some design time yesterday and um, i've started a new design and it's something that i haven't done before it's an you know an accessory that i haven't done before so it's very i was really really excited about it and and i really loved finding you know the yarn, right yarn to do the prototype and cast it on straight away and i was you know really really excited about it and i still am and it links in with an upcoming favorite an places upcoming favorite places to knit and i'm hoping also that it will be a collaboration with someone else so that's all really, really exciting. Yes. So having this extra bit of time when, you know, because the sewing, I did a lot of sewing last year, probably the last six months mainly of last year, I did a lot of sewing. And I think that was main, it was a combination of things really. And I think it's just because everybody was really enjoying my bags and I loved that you were enjoying my bags. But I do tend to put pressure on myself to do more and more and more. And you know, this is obviously and what's messed me up. Also, I've to, just to, to, time time management is a challenge for you. Yeah. And we've sat down and worked yeah. something out, which yeah. is hopefully going to resolve that. And what's wonderful about that is I've always known that if she had that design time, that something amazing would come out of it. And the first session of design time, it, it's like we've turned on a tap, and this amazing thing, yeah. this really cool, totally new accessory that you've never done before for me yeah yes. it's not not new no, not no. you know it's <laughs> for me it is yeah i've yeah. never never designed this type of thing before um so yeah that's it is so you and know it out fit of, in with the railway children favorite place to yes be. it does fit in with the railway children so i know sarah you'll be very excited about that you know and it, it did upset me that i had to make this decision that i just you know i couldn't do it for a little while i will go back to it you know but i just i can't i've got to I don't often think about myself at all. You've just got to get better. I've got to get better, so. What's this I see back yes. here? Right, when we were. Look. <laughs> it's not the most flattering of pictures, is it? But... That's not a very flattering picture, but the pictures inside yeah. are so cool. When we were. It's at... like, it's just brilliant. When we were at the there's museum. There's James, that's, the that's up on uh, Whitestone Cliff, and there's his typewriter that he wrote the. Uh, all Creature Scrap Small on, there's and there's Christopher car. Timothy in the yeah, car. Which we saw. But when we were at the museum the other day, we picked up a couple of things and we thought we'd just have a little giveaway. So we've got a lovely calendar. I know we're part way through the year, but I thought, well, the pictures are fantastic. You and know, it's, it's a nice keepsake. Yes, it's a nice keepsake. You know, the photos on there I think are lovely. It's really the 100th nice. anniversary of the birth of Alt yes. White. And then I also picked up a little notepad. There's Scaledale House, where we were, and World of Dress Harriet. So I thought that would be nice as a little giveaway. So to enter, to enter, we're going to set up a Ravelry thread with a question yep. in it. And all you have to do is, after watching this episode, yep. and I mean properly watching this episode, <laughs> testing you now, you need to go over to the Ravelry thread and you need to answer the question. And I will tell you what the question is. I'm going to tip you off. The question is, what was the name? of the real Drovers Inn. Yes. And we have covered it on this episode. We have put up a slide giving you the answer and we've also filmed 
giving you the answer. So it's not a tricky question. It's not a tricky question. And then what we will do is on the next episode, we will do a random number draw. Yep. So uh, enter in the Ravelry thread with the name of the real Droves in. Yep. And then next episode, we'll, we will do draw a we random might, number. And then and we will send those out to you. We just thought that might be fun. And like I said, a little memento. Little keepsake from our visit. Yeah. yeah. Cool. So that's the end of episode oh, forty-five. I've just got one more thing. Oh, you didn't on, say is that all you've got? Is that all you've got? I've just got one more thing I wanted to show you. I haven't got any yarn, new yarn. I did get, you know, the the some yarn gifted to me from lovely Sarah. Um, but what I wanted to show you, and I I didn't show you this last time because we ran out of time, was the only excuse. But I got. This is a very, very early birthday present from my lovely friend Sally in California. I've mentioned Sally a lot. Um, but she sent me this. Who proofreads all your patterns. She does. Sally is, oh, Sally is a... Oh, she's just the most fantastic person with grammar and everything. Oh. So I always send her my patterns and she, you know, she goes through it. Tech edits, I suppose, but proofreads it and tells me a comma here, hyphen there, all these kinds of little things which is brilliant and you know I can't ever thank her enough for everything that she does for me but she sent me the most amazing gift and she's been sewing a lot Sally now she was historically I think going back in her crafting history she, she was always a sewer she used to make beautiful quilts not done it for a while she'd been mainly knitting but then recently she's gone back to her sewing and she's just making the most fantastic things she made me this oh look I think it's called a sew together bag. Is that right, Sally? I'm hoping I've got that right. Isn't it wonderful? And it's a Jane Austen range of fabrics. And basically, you, I mean, it has, these are like little handles, look. Isn't that amazing? And then you open up the zip. I've got it stuffed full. And look, can you see? It's got all these little compartments and there's three zipper pockets and then all these compartments. And I'm using it for all my sewing notions. So, you know, I've got thread and tape measures and my, um, you know, cutting jobby and um, un unzippy thing. I've got all the technical terms, haven't I, today? <laughs> <laughs> Scissors, I know that one. Needles, everything to do with my sewing. And it's all in one place now. These are those clippy things I spoke about. No. Little clippy things, aren't they cute? <gasps> really cute. Love those. Cool. So, yeah, so thank you, Sally. I know I've said thank you, but I love it. Look, and uh, you can buy this pattern as I, I understand it. Um, so, if you, you know, if you wanted to find out exactly what it is, if you look on Sally's Instagram, she is Salbug, isn't she? If you look on my friends, you'll see Sally. She's Salbug. I think it's Sal underscore bug. Then, you know, I'm sure she will tell you exactly where the pattern is, but I'm sure it's called the Sew Together Bag. Oh, and I love it. Thank you, Sally. So that's the end of episode 45. We'll be back in two weeks with episode 46, and that sees the first transatlantic knit or forfeit, oh. where I am playing and losing to Robin. I'm making a prediction right now, but I don't mind, because it's just going to be an absolute thrill speaking to someone who knows so much about knitting of course but also about hit the, the period of history that i'm just fascinated with uh, so that I should think be you should be scared yeah well yeah <laughs> so that's going to be so exciting and then we'll be back the episode after that episode 47 for a brand new favorite place to knit and what we're going to be doing is we're going to be looking at what are sometimes called the founding fathers of Great Britain and that's the Plantagenets oh. so that's going to be really great we're going to be visiting a castle yeah yay Dan's very happy <laughs> we're going to be visiting an amazing castle I cannot wait and uh, we're going to be learning all about Henry the uh, second and Eleanor of Aquitaine um, and I didn't deliberately pick this just so I could swat up before knit or forfeit of course not <laughs> Uh, so yeah, that's going to be so great and that is coming um, in episode 47. So thank you so much for watching and yeah, have a great couple of weeks. Yes. Patrons will see you next Tuesday, yep. of course, for more stitching time. And then we've got pop and I can't wait for this pop because we'll be talking about some really cool things uh, coming next Friday. So yeah, great. We'll see you soon. See you soon. Bye. Bye.